Kevin, this is the right way to kick off the MCU on Disney Plus. What a show. It had my eyes hooked the whole time. It was like reading a comic and not wanting to put it down every page turn. Amazing, awesome. amazing job. Um, oh, but the first question I have is uh, pandemic related delays uh, saw WandaVision debut before Black Widow. Uh, how did the MCU uh, change or, or, or was the narrative affected at all for phase four? It, well, it wasn't. It, it was um, a question I've obviously been, been asked a lot um, with good reason. And, uh, and, and the other day I said, uh, yes, if this had happened a year or two before, um, uh, we obviously wouldn't have had, we always adapt is the truth. And that's part of what storytelling and filmmaking is, is adjusting and adapting. Um, but we would have had to have changed a heck of a lot more um, sure. in the build up to Endgame than we've had to now. The fact that WandaVision is, uh, is, is before Black Widow and, and Falcon or Soldier, um, uh, after you see all of them, I can tell you a couple of, a, a few tiny things here and there, um, but almost nothing is the truth. And the, and the, uh, and the, uh, uh, on the, the, you know, the alternative is often when you're thrown a loop, um, you end up with something, end up with something better. And I don't want to say 2020 uh, led to anything better, frankly, uh, but the fact that WandaVision is the, the debut show, as you just said, um, is actually quite appropriate and quite a, uh, the show was always intended um, as an opportunity for us to play with the medium of television and play with uh, storytelling in a way we haven't done before. And, uh, and I'm very happy and very proud that it turns out WandaVision is the debut of that because it's the boldest swing we've ever done and something that could not ever have even been a movie. Uh, oh, it, I, it actually only works as episodic. When I was watching it, I almost forgot I was watching like a MCU style thing and because it, it just took me to that throwback of those sitcoms. And I was like, this is phenomenal. Like the comedy beats were all there. It was amazing. Um, but how does the specific nature of a weekly release schedule of like WandaVision and Disney Plus uh, uh, content affect the creative side of story planning compared to the last 12 years Marvel Studio has been doing with the storytelling? It, it's, um, it allows us to flex uh, new muscles, different muscles in a way that was perfect. I've been at, at Marvel now over 20 years and it's been, uh, um, it's evolved and changed drastically, as you know, better than anyone over the over those 20 years. Um, and it and it has always been for the better, and it has always been to tell new stories. When people would ask about fatigue or or um, superhero fatigue, uh, people would ask me that in 2005. My answer was always, "Well, it's as long as we keep making them unique, sure. and and I don't want to just keep making superhero movies. I want to make all types of movies. I want to make all types of." Um, stories and and shows and that's what the MCU allows us to do um, happens to all be characters from the Marvel universe um, but but the comics if if people who've actually read the comics know there's such a great diversity of storytelling and and tone um, and genre in comics we've been doing that as well and uh, and uh, uh, that's what that's what has um, uh, kept it so remarkably exciting. Standing on a sitcom set designed to look like the late 50s, early 60s with a studio audience and with actual old cameras and, and lighting equipment from the era was surreal to me. Um, and just such a fun, such a fun thing that, uh, that um, you know, just like, just like seeing all the X-Men in costume for the first time on my first Marvel film that I worked on. It's just all these different experiences happen to be able to fall under the umbrella of uh, of, uh, of this cinematic uh, universe. I, I love it too, because it's almost like a, a lost art form, almost like a hand-drawn animation, like all the, all the practical wow. effects. I loved that side of it, so cool. Um, now, a quick question, is the MCU still organized uh, going forward into the future in phases still? So far, we, we, we announced uh, much of phase four, Gosh, when the heck was that now? A year and a half ago at, Com at Comic-Con? Holy mackerel. Um, and that's what we've been. I think there's a sense of when we announce a lot of things, people start going, okay, well, what's next then? Well, once we now announce something, we have to then go do it. We have to then go make it. Um, and that's very much what, we're, what we've been doing for that last year and a half and we'll be doing for the next uh, year and a half or two. Um, so there is, I think, 
as um, the phases have expanded, you look at phase one and phase two and phase three, they've expanded. Certainly phase four is bigger um, than any of the other ones. The, the, the number of years that it takes to complete a phase is essentially the same between, you know, it varies, but three to four years or so. Um, the number of projects in those phases is growing thanks to, thanks to Disney Plus. So that's what we're heading into this year is to, um, is to uh, uh, see how audiences um, attract and follow along or don't because believe it or not, there are people that just, you know, pop in, enjoy a movie or show and then pop out. Right. Uh, and we make, and we make uh, um, uh, our shows and series for, uh, and movies for them as well. Um, but uh, but it, it seems like a nice, at least internally for us at Marvel Studios, the phases um, uh, it, then building to overarching sagas is a nice way to, uh, to um, build stories for us. Now, uh, at the Disney Investor Day, uh, you announced that the Fantastic Four is happening. And I, we've talked about this. I'm a huge X-Men guy. Cyclops is my guy. When will we see the X-Men? Uh, you know, the X-Men is, you know how much I love the X-Men. I already said that's where I, that's, that's where I started. So, um, you know, I can't tell anything before we actually announce it, but rest assured, the discussions uh, uh, have been uh, uh, long and, um, and uh, ongoing internally with us. I can't wait. Now, uh, with, with WandaVision, uh, how long what, has this series been in development and what was the process like coming up with the story? Uh, it's been all, almost three years now since we uh, since we had a discussion with Lizzie and Paul. I think during the junket of Infinity War that we had this idea um, that Bob Iger had come to us and said, you know, he was they were doing a streaming service. They wanted us to start working on on programs for it, and this was one of the first ideas. Mainly just because there's so much Wanda and Vision stories to tell, right. and we'd only scratched the surface with that relationship, and also because. Paul and Lizzie are so spectacular, we knew they could carry anything and we wanted to work with them more and see more of what, uh, of what they could bring to this world, which is, which is an astounding amount. Um, uh, and, and we had this idea of, uh, of sitcoms, of tapping into this, this love of, uh, of sitcoms that uh, a lot of us at Marvel Studios had. And I spent much of my childhood watching, uh, watching television, watching Nick at Night, and still now with me TV, I, that I always, it's either TCM uh, or me TV is what I flip between if I'm ever watching a, watching a television. And, uh, and I sort of was delving into my own psyche of why is that the case and what, what, is, what is so comforting about these, about these dated shows. And, and usually the answer is the spectacular writing on the Dick Van Dyke show or, or um, uh, 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 the, 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 the family um, connections of the Brady Bunch and the simplicity of there's a problem at the beginning of the episode, 30 minutes later, there's a solution and you move on. <laughs> and well, how comforting is that? Um, and, and what would that mean to somebody who has gone through um, traumatic things like all of us have and like the characters in our, in our movies have? Um, and it wasn't until um, Mary Lovanos, our executive producer, um, spoke with Jack Schaefer and Jack Schaefer came in because you might imagine we did have some meetings where people were like, Marvel sitcom, I, what are you guys talking about? Um, and that, by the way, that's happened to us going back to pitching Iron Man to people. Wow. Uh, uh, the list of people that have passed is very, very long on all of our projects because it's hard to see something until you, until you make it. Thankfully, Jack Schaefer saw it and Jack Schaefer was able to take a lot of the very, um, um, uh, sort of high level concepts we had and turn it into uh, a structure and a narrative. And then Matt Shackman, um, who between giant Game of Thrones episodes and growing up on sitcom sets as a child actor was made to, to, to do this. I sort of couldn't believe it. We'd met with Matt um, a handful of times in the past after his big, big um, uh, uh, episodes to try to find something. I did not know about his sitcom past until he came in and pitched on this. Um, and I think might have brought pictures of some of his uh, early early work. And I could I really sort of couldn't believe it that uh, that uh, here was a filmmaker that was uh, that was destined perhaps to do this this mashup. Amazing. Now, last question I have for you is: How do you balance a busier Marvel Studios schedule going forward with a Star Wars project? Uh, 
well, it's it's all it's all stuff I love, and uh, and um, everything regarding Star Wars has leaked um, and is not anything you know anywhere near talking about. So it is it is um, uh, Marvel, but this is this is what if if I wasn't being paid to do it, I would be doing it uh, you know here in my basement just with my toys, and nobody would ever see it. That's so it's what I do and think about all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's what I do with my hero clicks. But I got something for you. Next time I see you in person, I made you a personal Kevin Feige oh, hero click. But uh, next time, oh my gosh, awesome! Hey, look, I can't thank you enough for your time, Kevin. You are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hope to see you again soon in person. Yeah. Take care.